It don't cost a bit more to dream big than it does little. Today, I will have my faith built by the Word of God. I will not allow my past to control my future. God has given me my dreams to look forward to and my faith as a means by which I will arrive. I will dream big because I serve a big God. Put your hands together for Miss Angie Blevins. Would you do that? hands together for Mr. Pastor Jackie. I just called him Mr. and I don't think I've ever done that. I'm like, what is that? Like Mr. Pastor Jackie. I know. I'm like, I don't even know who this guy is. I'm like, let me introduce myself to him right now. Um, well, thank you guys all for standing, but you are welcome to be seated. I always just want to like thank and honor my pastor and then every time I go to thank and honor my pastor I end up crying and I'm like I don't want to start every message crying I mean I'll cry at some point I'm sure but I try to at least get out the go with it but I it's hard to honor him and not get emotional about it so today I was like what what is one of the I love so many things about my pastor but I was like what what's something that I just love about my pastor and I started thinking about the fact that there's so many things that my kids will never have to experience, at least didn't have to experience as children, that some people just experience. You know, they're like, oh, you never went through that? Like, oh, okay. So for me, as him, as my spiritual father, um, I've never experienced the idea that I couldn't be able to do this. And I get that there is a lot of people that actually haven't experienced this kind of freedom. And they don't even realize or know like you actually are anointed as a woman to bring the word of God so I'm thankful for that that's just one of the many things but I'm thankful that I've been exposed to this atmosphere is anyone else thankful for that hopefully if you're not you will be when this is over um I know when pastor said he's not preaching I le I immediately saw Melissa Dean stand up and I was like oh shoot is she gonna leave? But she just moved down and she had a seat. I was like, thank you, Lord. I immediately was like, Lord, you get her right now? And he just, boom, he put her right back in her seat. She tried to leave, but mm-mm, mm-mm. The Lord said, this is for you tonight, Melissa. You can't run and you can't hide. <laughs> I love you, Melissa. Well, so when Pastor asked me if I would do this, I was like, okay, you know, I, I, do, I start this the same way every time. Okay, God, <laughs> it's me. Uh, what is it that you would have for me to share? Because I never want to um, waste an opportunity to share what the Lord ha uh, is doing in me specifically. So he immediately was like, I already, I already gave you the word. It's in your phone. And I was like, oh, I remembered during Monday night prayer, I'm gonna plug Monday night prayers in here. They're incredible, they're amazing. I know life is busy and I know we have you know work and those things, but if you can get here, you will not regret it. So just come on in. So during Monday night prayer, um, he was like, I gave you, I gave you a word, so go to that. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And I was excited and I opened up my phone and I'm, I'm going to open it up even right now so that you guys could see like when I was like, it's already, the Lord already gave me the word. This is just so exciting. So this is the word that he gave me on 620. Those of you that are close. Yeah. So this is the word he said, <laughs> and I quote, fullness in God. And then he said, what does it mean to have the fullness of God? So I was like, okay, what does it mean to have the fullness of God? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. What does it mean to have the fullness of God? And I said, I'm going to preach. I'm going to try. I really feel like I'm supposed to teach tonight. So I'm going to try to stick to that. We'll see how this goes. It's a Wednesday night, so this is more than appropriate, right? You're ready to learn. You came here. You're hungry. You came on a Wednesday night. I know you're hungry. And so we're going to eat some meat tonight, okay? You can't say we're going to talk about what is the fullness of God and not be like, okay, so if you need to unbutton your pants, you know, and like make some room, 
go ahead and do that, okay? I might have to loosen my belt because we're going to feast tonight. That's His silliness, y'all, has done come out on me. It doesn't take much to get me here. And he's already, it's just like, it's a transferred. So there you go. Um, I'm sure I'll get all serious and start crying at some point. But right now, I'm just feeling a little silly too. So we're going to eat. But because this is meaty, I'm going to try to take it. I'm going to try to pace it, okay? Because I really do want us. This is for us, by the way. So the, I told you this is the word he gave me. And, and, and then he said, okay, now let's, let's meditate on it. And let's really, really just slowly digest what it is to have the fullness of God because he wants us to experience it. And to think, it just to stop there and say, God wants us to experience his fullness. So what does it mean to be filled with the fullness of God? That's pretty big. So l- let's just go there, okay? I-, I, wanna, I want that. Does anyone else want that? Does anybody else just want to grow and mature and just keep on? Like, it doesn't matter where you are tonight. We can grow in Christ. That's just an exciting thing. So I- I'm just going to, okay, so this is where I'm going to start. And like I said, we'll follow the Holy Spirit. You're going to need your Bibles, trust me. Because as you feast on the Word, you need to have the Word there. So if you've got your phone, get it out. If you've got your Bible, Bible, get it out. I'm gonna, I have a few um, verses I'm going to share, but we're going to mainly stay in one verse. So even if you just need to stay on that one, I'll you know kind of pepper in some other ones around there. It's only one verse, guys. Really, the main message is on, well, not one verse, on one um, section of the Bible. And I managed to actually type that wrong like five times in my message tonight. So thankfully, my husband was like, I don't think this is the one you meant. I was like, how did I do that? You only had one verse, and Okay, so Colossians, we're going to start here. We're going to start here in Colossians, in Colossians. So just so we can kind of understand when we're talking about Really, this is the goal, guys. This is the goal as a Christian. For us to be filled completely with God so that his attributes, his character, his perfection, his holiness, his power, and his love is so defined in our existence that people cannot deny that he is God and he is real. That's our ultimate goal as Christians to be that filled with God that people see him when they see you that they experience God when they experience you isn't that the ultimate goal so you're like really though but yes really and and Jesus showed us because you know Jesus always he goes before to show us how this looks so in Colossians 1 19 in the amplified version this isn't the verse by the way for the night but We're going to lead to it. It says, For it pleased the Father for all the fullness of deity, the sum of his his essence, all his perfection, powers, and attributes to dwell permanently in him, the Son. Okay? So it was God's will and it pleased God. The Father. It pleased God that all of his fullness would dwell permanently in the Son. And so then later on, same um, book here, but in chapter 2, verse 9, Colossians 2, 9, he says, For in him all the fullness of deity, the Godhead, dwells in bodily form, completely expressing the divine essence of of God. Both passages powerfully affirm that Jesus had God living in him fully, in all totality. All of of God was in Christ himself. Paul continues, though. Say, he continues. Paul continues with another incredible fact, that Jesus Christ is now dwelling and living on the inside of us. The fullness of God that is in Jesus, you with me? 
The fullness of God that's within Jesus has been brought to fullness in us. Colossians 2.10. 2.10. And for our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and the authority in the universe. So I'm going to read it again. And for our completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows from within us. Mm, That is good. That is so incredibly good. But here's the thing, and I'm going to try to teach and not preach, but here's the thing. These are good and powerful words, but God wants you to experience this. He doesn't want us just to talk about it and listen to it and hear it from my words. He wants us to experience this. It goes beyond knowledge. It goes beyond human comprehension. He wants you to experience it. We find our completeness in no one else and nothing else but Jesus Christ alone. And what, I mean, really, how could we even ever even think in our minds that we could find fullness that we could find satisfaction in anything less than him. Him. I mean, he says, I'm offering you my fullness. Why would we ever try to get complete in any other way? And you won't. Even if you try, you won't. So this is where we're going to go. Paul conveys this same idea. And this is what I believe the Lord wants us to unpack. And I believe that as we go through this prayer, that this prayer is going to come alive. And it is going to become living in us. That's my prayer. And this was Paul's prayer. So I'm joining with him now in prayer. So go to Ephesians 3.14 is where we're going to start. Ephesians 3.14. And this is where you're going to hold your place. If you got a Bible, just go ahead and put your little ribbon there. Because this is where we're going to be. Okay? So I'm going to read this scripture first, and then, like I said, we're going we're gonna to unpack it, and we're going to eat, and we're going to meditate, and we are going to really let this word dig down deep in our hearts. Okay, are you ready for that? Okay, verse 14 is where we're going to start, and I'm reading the Amplified. For this reason, grasping the greatness of his plan, which the Jews and the Gentiles are now joined together in Christ, pause, that means us, Okay. He's just letting you know, this is for all of us. This isn't just for the Jews. If you didn't know where do you fall, you're the Gentile, unless you are a Jew and you are already there, okay? So we're joined together with Christ. And this is what Paul says. I bow my knees in reverence before the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in and on heaven and on earth derives its name, God the first and ultimate Father. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling in your innermost being and personality so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and the length and the height and the depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing endless love and that you may become and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ which far passes and surpasses mere knowledge without experience you may be filled up throughout your being to the fullness of God 
so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives. Completely filled and flooded with God himself. What a wonderful and powerful prayer. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. And it finishes with 20, but I'm going to try really hard not to go to 20 because I really think he wants to stay here. But just so you know, it ends with a bang. So the summary, (laughs) the summary here is really, if I were just to summarize it, is that this prayer is to grant us the strength to comprehend the love of Christ in its fullness that would supersede and surpass any human logic that we could have. In order, the purpose of this prayer, that you might be filled with all fullness of God. Being filled with the fullness of God experienced as Christ dwelling in our hearts, enabling us to comprehend the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of his love. So great, so greatly that your knowledge wouldn't even begin to try to capture and box in that love. So this is what I'm going to pray over us. Father, grant us Paul's prayer. I come like he did, just asking and, and just coming to you and saying, Lord, Would this please come to pass in our lives, even as we study and as we meditate on this word tonight, Lord, I ask that it come to pass. I ask that your supernatural strength would just come in and start flooding our innermost beings with your divine might and your explosive power that we would be empowered tonight to discover and understand and experience how great of the magnitude of your endless love for us, that your love would manifest itself to us, God, in ways that would exceed our own imagination, that you would come and you would fill us, Lord. You would fill us with your fullness, God. The fullness of all that is you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you receive that? I receive that. I believe we will experience beyond just these words what God wants for us. And there's a reason why Paul prayed this prayer. And I believe that there's a reason why God wants us just to study just this prayer. And you're like, we're just getting started. That's, it's been nine minutes, y'all. I hope you ate before you came. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Okay, we're just getting started. But this is what we're going to do. We are going to study. We are going to meditate. We are going to take in this prayer. And we are going to receive. We are going to see the manifestation of this prayer in our lives. I believe that. And if you believe that, this will happen for you too. So we'll just start. We're, I'm, you know what? I was like, Lord, where do you want me to start? Because I could be like, in the beginning, right? I'm not going to do that. Where we're going to start? We're going to start with the may he grant you the riches. So what verse is that, guys? May he grant you 16. 16 is where we're going to start kind of just digging in, okay? So in 16, he says, may he grant you, so he being God, may he grant you out of the riches of of his glory. What are the riches of his glory? Because again, this is where I felt like, because I was like, Lord, this is all you want me to do? And he's like, how quickly do we read these words? And we're like, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Right. And we're just like, boom, we move on to the next one. And I really believe he's like, hold on, just like slow down for a second and take this in that what Paul is asking and what we just asked God for and what we just attached our faith to is that God would provide for us out of the riches of his glory. And this really, this has a double meaning. When we talk about the riches of God's glory, there is a double meaning. Number one, riches flow 
from God's glory. Okay, so that, there's one. So riches come from his glory. And riches point or lead to his glory. And you're like, hmm, just let, hmm, just let that sit for a second. When God gives or grants according to his riches and glory, there's a lot of scriptures to you guys around this where God would grant out of the riches of his glory, okay? But when God says he's going to grant to you, gift to you, give to you according to his riches, it means that according to the infinite resources or riches that flow from him, from his glory, the glory is the yielding, what you're receiving, those riches, you're just yielding the glory of God in your life. That's what he overflows with. God overflows with the riches of his glory. So to receive from the riches of God's glory is to simply receive from the overflow of his glory, infinite resources. Well, what do you need? What riches, I mean, don't tie it down to just finances, guys. It is the riches of his glory. Everything can be found in his glory. He is the river of all life. So anything you need, you can get from the infinite resources of God's glory. So that's one way. And then the second way, it's all proportionate to his infinite beauty. It's God's glory in that overflow and through that overflow it's the riches that then point right back to God everything we receive from God's glory only points to what his glory his glory it's all in proportionate to his glory I can only receive what he has it's, it's double meaning there. This is why we talk about God's glory is the mountain spring from which everything is flowing. And it's also the final ocean in which it all flows. So when you pray and when you ask God that he would give you according to his riches and glory, this is what you're asking for. This is what you're believing for. This is what Paul speaks of in Romans eleven thirty six. He says, for out of him, the sustainer of everything came everything. And now everything finds fulfillment in him. May all praise and honor be given to him forever. That right there, that scripture right there, that will make me preach. Ask Kenzie. I, I think we heard like one verse, the rocks cry out in the car. At least she knows. I mean, I started preaching. The whole car was like, what just happened? Like literally a verse came out and they were like, can we go in the mall now? And I literally was just like, the rocks cry out. Like I could just get going on this. But y'all, he is so worth, y'all think I'm joking. <laughs> I think, they, but this right here, it's because of this. Guys, for out of him, the sustainer, the creator of everything came everything and now everything finds fulfillment in him. You, tell me you don't have something to praise God about, but I'll just turn the page on that one because you don't want to get me started on that one. Okay, so there's the first little, we're not even in a sentence, but th so just so you understand, that's the riches of his glory that we're asking. So what do we ask that he gives us? Because he has everything, right? But this is what Paul specifically is asking that God give out of the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with the spiritually energized power through his spirit in your inner self. Indwelling your innermost being and personality. So Paul says, Lord, would you grant them to receive strength. Strength with power through his spirit in our inner person with power. This is something, if we're asking y'all, God to give us strength 
then it must be something that we cannot obtain on our own. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't be going to God and asking him, out of the riches of your glory, give me what I already have. No, this is more than human strength. This is not something that you already possess in the natural. If we possess this power on our own, Paul would not be on his knees going to God and saying, please grant us a power that we already have. So it's something greater than what you can have apart from him. He is praying that power comes from God and it comes from the riches of his glory through, so how do you get it? Through the spirit. It is something that comes from him through him, which is his spirit. And Paul mentions this same power in Ephesians 6.10. Now my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union. Life union. You put a dot there because we're going to come back to that in just a second. Through our life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. You are victorious because his power, his strength is flowing in and through you when you are in life union with Jesus Christ. Strength, power through his spirit in your inner person. Y'all know that Paul right now is saying there's an inner and an outer. So y'all know what I'm going to have you say right now. You ready? I am a spirit. I live in a body and I possess a soul. Okay, so there is a difference, y'all. Let it soak in. Again, just like let this word go into you and just become real to you. You are not this body. You are not your soul. You are not your emotions. You are not your thoughts. And sometimes we need to tell ourselves that and remind ourselves, my emotions do not control me. I am a spirit. I I possess emotions. I don't know who that was for. Maybe it's just for me. Okay? So that was just free. But we are a spirit. Okay? So we are are talking about our inner person. And Paul is, again, he's speaking to this. I'm going to give you scripture for this, okay? So this isn't just one place. He speaks to it in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. He says, so no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears away, our inner being is renewed every single day. Every day single day for those of you that have lived here a little bit longer and you've seen your body slowly but surely gradually wearing dim aren't you glad that you're you're not a body that you are a spirit and you're in spirit instead of growing dim day after day it is renewed and built up day after day And because I'm a spirit and not a body, I get to tell my body how it's going to be and behave. This is why God wants us to get revelation from experience with him on this word. Because you cannot live this out if you don't really, truly believe it on the inside of you. So he says, okay, so now we're going to receive strength and power from God's riches and glory. And it's going to come to us via the Holy Spirit. And it's going to come into our innermost. And this is what he's praying for, that the strength of God through God's spirit would come into our inner inner person so that, because why do we need strength in our inner person? Why do you need strength in the natural You know, you got to do some things, right? So he knows, Paul knows, we're going to need the strength of God. You need the strength of God coming into your innermost so that you have the capacity 
to do all the things that you need to do on this earth. So that strength may be to lift up somebody else. That strength may be to break and destroy burdens on other people. It may be to that strength to hold on, to, to just not let go of the promises that God has given to you. God will give you supernatural strength to hold up the shield of faith, to take a grip of the promises that he has given you and to not grow weary and doing good things because you know that there is a promise that is attached to that. That's the supernatural strength that you need from God when you're hurting, when you're going through things in the natural, when your emotions, they are real, when you are feeling those emotions, you can say, I have the strength of God, the power of God to lay hold of what God has promised me. He promised me that I may have mourning here, but joy would come for me in the morning. Whatever it is that you need, you need the strength of God in you to bring those things to pass and to maintain the ground that God's given you, but also to take more ground. Okay, so I'm going to take a pause right now because I feel like the Holy Spirit was like, and maybe it's just for me, but he was like, it's time to take more ground. I think we kind of got comfortable at like steadfast, like Okay, I'm just going to stand here, right? You know, there's a storm, so I'm just going to, you know, buckle down and get a grip and just stay right here. But I believe the Lord is saying, stop, like, buckling down the hatches. It's time to make up some ground. All right, all right, Keith. Don't, I said, I'm going to try to teach. I told him, I was like, I'm going to try to teach. Okay, y'all still with me? Okay. You're like, we are still on verse 16. All right, so it's just going to keep getting better, y'all. So another way to say this, and this is why the word is so important, <laughs> because the strengthening happens because when you have the Holy Spirit in you, he moves you. It's the Holy Spirit that moves you to see what you didn't see before. It's the Holy Spirit that shows you those promises and then you're like oh there it is you need the spirit of God to unpack the word of God okay because he's the one that wrote it so he's going to help you translate it so it's the spirit of God that helps you uncover and see the promises that were given to us through the blood of Jesus and through that our faith is strengthened are you with me it's the word, him, him showing us the word that then we can apply in our lives. Okay, so verse 17, all right? So that, we're just moving in here. Let me catch you up. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with the power through his spirit in your inner self so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And we're just going to, right there. So Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. Christ would inhabit and indwell our hearts through our faith. So Paul is writing this to believers. So why is Paul praying that believers would have the indwelling of Jesus? Because when you receive Jesus, you receive Christ. So we got to take a pause here and say, why would Paul be praying that they would receive the indwelling of Jesus Christ through their faith, since they're already saved? Galatians 20, Galatians 2, 20, 2, 20. I have been crucified with Christ, done. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by, is it up there? I'm going to tell it to you. You ready? And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me 
and gave himself for me. So here's what's, here's what Paul is saying. To have Christ, and this is so important, and I didn't give them this version, so if somebody knows it, it's probably passion, if I'm going to be honest, either that or amplified. But I want you all to get your eyes on this. Because what Paul is saying here is to have Christ living in me. That happens when I'm united with Christ. I am united with Christ through faith. Where faith is dead, there is no presence of Christ. I am united to Christ through faith. Can we all agree on that? So if faith is dead, where faith is dead and not operating, then there is no presence of Christ. And you can also say that where faith is strong and growing, Christ is noticeably more powerful and more present. When your faith is weak, our experiences of the presence of Christ is what? Weak. This is so important. This is why Paul is praying that we would have Christ inhabit us. Meaning, he's not just an acquaintance. He's not a visitor in your heart. But he has taken up residence. He is living in you. He is living life united with you. And the only way that we can live united, one 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 on one with Christ with us. Like, I'm just thinking like he's here, like he's with me. In order for that to happen, it takes faith. So if I am not strong in my faith, I shouldn't be surprised if I'm not seeing the manifestation of God and his goodness strongly working in my life. I have to have the faith to believe in the promises in order for the promises to be seen in the natural. It's my faith that pulls them down. So that's why Paul is like, Lord, I pray that they would have power and strength from the Holy Spirit to have Christ in them, inhabiting them through their faith. Y'all, it all goes back to this. You knew it was going to come back. We were going to talk about our faith because it's in coordination with our faith that Christ lives in us. Now, let me just like, I'm going to, I was going to say some things and then get to it, but I'm going to go ahead and say this because I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I am not saying that you lose your authentic faith or you lose your authentic salvation. Okay. So hear me out on this. I'm talking about experiencing life united with Christ through our faith. There's a difference. There's a difference. So what he is saying here, what Paul is praying for us is that our hearts have Christ living in them. He could, it could be saying like this, because this is what he's talking about. It's enduring. It's about this preserving, persevering in faith. Okay. That's what he's praying for is that we would like not lose hold of what it is that God has done for us, that we don't lose hold of the fact that Christ has come in. He lives in me and that we never lose sight of that fact in our lives and that we stand on it. So Essentially, you could say that Paul is praying that your faith does not fail, but that it endures, that it perseveres so that Christ and his presence would endure in your life. I want the presence of God to be enduring in my life. I don't want it to be something that I experience in this place. And only this place. I want the presence of God to be enduring in my life. 
with me everywhere I go, in everything I do. And that is why Paul was praying fervently to God. Let them have your Holy Spirit to give them the ability to, in faith, endure with Christ. Hallelujah. This means that God and our faith in him has to be more than reading and listening. It's also by prayer. These are ways that we get it. And we need those. It's how our faith is built, through praying, through hearing the word. That's how our faith is built. But there's a second thing I believe that he's saying. Galatians 4, 19, Amplified Classic. My children for whom I am again suffering birth pangs. So this is, this is Paul talking to them. He's like, my kids, oh, y'all, I'm laboring for you, okay? But then he says, until Christ is completely and permanently formed and molded within you. So I believe that Paul is one saying, we need this enduring, persevering presence of God, this, our faith to just endure, but also that Christ in you should be molding and transforming you. You need both. You need to make sure he is staying with you. And guess what? While he's here, he transforms your heart. He is not just a visitor that comes in your home, but when he has taken up residence, he redecorates and he does a good job. I'm telling you, he doesn't leave it the same way that he came in. He, and he fills it with the greatest things he's got. I just told you that he's got all the riches and glory. So when he, can, he comes into your life, God does extravagantly wonders. I'm not going to go to 20. I'm not going to go to 20. If y'all know this scripture, I'm like, woo, it, it gets so good. Okay, but he does a wonderful and awesome things. Okay, so Paul is saying here that he wants Christ, and this is what he's praying for, for us, and this is what we're believing for, right? We've already received this, that Christ is fully formed in us. We are being formed and fashioned into his divine nature and being. He is suggesting that he is praying for the enduring presence of Christ in our lives, meaning he would stay with us and he would just move on in and be a part of everything. He's also the enduring presence of Christ, but he's also praying for the transformative, the transformative and the transformational presence of God. It's two things. It's enduring and it's transforming. It's both. And that's what Paul is saying. Give that to them, Lord through faith, that they could be transformed by his presence into the, the very nature of God himself. And it's like, the nature of God? How dare you say that? Well, God said it. He actually said it in Second Peter verse 1, verse 4, through his spirit, okay? He said it. He said that we are partakers of divine nature, partakers of divine nature. This means that we participate as a partner, a companion with God, in fellowship with God of his divine nature. This is the greatest mysteries of, of, of my faith. And I can't wait for God to tell me why he wanted to share his nature, his very self with me. It's the question the angels had. You know, when God was creating us in his image, the word says that the angels they all came around and they were like, who is this? They watched him create everything. They watched him create the galaxies and the waters. And he, they watched all of this happen. And, and they were like, that's good, man. That's good. That's so good. That's so good. Wow, that's so good. And then they were like, oh. He's putting his very self in them. It is a mystery to me in the natural. But my spirit understands it all. And even your spirit right now is witnessing with this. Because it's the spirit of God and he did this. This was his plan. 
that we would be his children and that we would have his nature. And that is what Paul was asking. Oh, that your faith in Christ would be such that Christ would flourish and have a manifesting presence that never fails because your faith never fails. That's what Paul was praying. And I received that in my own life. Y'all, we're just getting to why. (laughs) Why? This is what he's praying, that we would have all this, but what's the purpose of it? Well, in verse 17, he goes on to say, and may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width the length and the height and the depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing love. And that you may come to know and practically through personal experience, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. Paul wants us to experience the love of God, not just know about it, not just hear about it, not just like mentally agree that God's love is good and he is great and oh, the great magnitude of his love and the depth and the heights and the width. No, Paul is praying that we would experience personally God's love. And if you are a Christian in this room today, you've done it. Listen, if you have I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach for a second, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this so you guys aren't here all night. Isn't this good, though? Isn't God so good? This is just his word. Okay, so I'm not asking you to tell me that I'm doing a good job. I'm saying that the word is good. This is so incredible that God would do this for us. So he, what he's showing, the whole purpose here is that we would be strengthened by the Spirit with Christ dwelling and remaining in our hearts in order so that, so that we could comprehend the love of God. Because we can't comprehend this kind of love apart from the Spirit of God. The world doesn't understand it for a reason. You need the Holy Spirit to even begin to comprehend this kind of love. That we could grasp the love, that we could comprehend this kind of love that it would surpass knowledge and that it would be something that you're not just read or taught but that you would experience God wants you to experience his love some of you may have never experienced the true love that God has but he wants it for you he desires it for you that's why he had Paul go to his knees and ask for it and pray for it. But I want you to look at it like this because this is the way the word wanted us to look at it. He said how deeply rooted and securely grounded or founded in love. And the word consistently gives us these images. And Pharaoh is even singing about it tonight, about Christ being our foundation and our anchor. But this is what the word is saying here that this love would be so rooted and so grounded and founded in him. So first you've got the tree rooted, rooted. A tree has roots that continue to go down deep. A healthy tree will continue to have roots that will shoot down deep into the depths of the earth and a healthy tree will continue to have branches that go up to the heights so when you are rooted in the love of Christ then you are continuing to send roots of your life down deeper into Christ and the branches of your life The branches of your service, the branches of your love, the branches of your praise, they just keep getting higher and higher as we experience what we have been rooted in. And then he says, I want you to be rooted in that. And I want your branches to reach high. There's your depth and there's your height. But he says, I want you to be 
grounded or founded in that love as well. So this image is one of a house. And every house that is built needs a foundation. And a foundation doesn't go up and down. A foundation is this way. It's a length. And you can't add another room to a house without laying a foundation first. You will never build any Christian house wider than there are foundations. So we have to live our lives founded in Christ. He is the solid rock that we built our lives on. And if we are rooted in Christ and our branches reach up high and he is the foundation of everything we do. When I move this way, his foundation is under my feet. And when I go this way, there is a solid foundation. And this is when, as Christians, you've experienced this love. You have. I don't know how big you've experienced it. That's up to you and the faith that you believe in his capabilities because he's infinite and he's all powerful and he's all knowing. And I could tell you all the attributes of God. He can do it all. So it's really just the limit is only on how much we are willing to believe God. How much we are willing to allow him to transform us into his image. But the word tells us that anytime as a Christian, anytime you have stepped out without that there, but knowing he is my solid rock, you experience the love of God. Every time you went and you dug deep into the word, you experienced the love of God. You experienced, like when you laid down that night, you knew you had tasted. Have you been there? When you just knew, I have tasted the love of God today. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to experience it. He wants you to know. I know for myself. He is who he says he is. And that he will do what he says he's going to do. Not because I've seen him do it in their life. And I'm thankful for that. That's a builder. I'm thankful for it. I, I just look around. And I see the ways God has moved in all of your lives. And I thank him for it. But I want to personally experience that in my life. And that's what God wants for you. That's his longing. That's his desire to fill you with his love. This is it, guys. If I just like jumped just to the very end, this is what I would say. What is the love of God? You know, this is where I was like, God, so what is it? What is the fullness of God? What is having the fullness of God? And he says, when you look at this, when you think about the depths of my love and you think about the heights of my love and you think about the breadth of my love, there's no, ex there's no end to it. It's absolutely endless. And he says to be full is to understand that and to receive that. This extent of him is the fullness of him. It fills everything. God's love fills everything. And when we sink our roots into him and we build our lives on him, we get to experience that love. And in that, you experience God's fullness. But he has more. Love, the love of Christ is God's gift of himself in all the ways a human can enjoy him. The love of Christ is God's gift of himself who is love in all the ways a human could enjoy him. That's the fullness of God. So you think of every way that you could enjoy God and he says, I will do that. I will fill that. Let me in and I will fill that. In whatever way you think you could enjoy life, that's him.
That's his love. That's how deep his love is. That's how great his love is. And he says, and I'm not content with you just hearing about it. I want you to experience it. And that's what Paul prayed. And that's what I'm going to pray for you. That we would achieve this fuller life that's unhindered and unquenched. And we just say, God, be full. Let your love be full in my life. Thank you guys so much for joining High Praises Church podcast today. We are so happy to have had you with us. If you just met Jesus for the first time and you want to commit your life to him, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for answering my prayer and saving my life. Amen. God is so good. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and may he be gracious to you. Now, we want you to stay connected with our socials. You can find us every Sunday and Wednesday on our Facebook and YouTube live at The High Praises Church and catch us on our Instagram at The High Praises. Can't wait to see you next week. Take care.